Hey guys, Mark Galloway here. Welcome to vlog number 25. Okay, so um, I was gonna do a recording uh, when I first woke up at around 2.30 or something a.m. before I went to work, but um, I didn't have time. I had to uh, take care of all my sheets, put them in the laundry. Okay, so, um, so in this vlog, we're heading to Atlanta. Now, I had done a vlog about Atlanta in the past, but I didn't. Re I didn't feel like I really did much for, uh, for number one and for two. Well, well, mo well, because my mom came with me, I couldn't really record her. But I recorded most of what I could. But I'm gonna try to make this a better vlog. So, um, so I'm getting there by plane, not by van. But um, now what I'm gonna be doing over there is not only I'm going to a mosque structure over there on the Saturday. But I'm also going there to uh, try more of Annie's foods she, as she owns like a few restaurants over there. Also, what I'm going to be doing over there is rekindle my relate my friendship with Lamar. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Lamar when I'm at the hotel over there. But right now, I'm just, um, we're finishing uh, packing. I have my carry-on over there. And also, um, there's my plane ticket. Now, here's here's a little update about this uh, monster truck stand. So, in vlog number 24, I did show, um, I think it, from what I, I couldn't recall if I told you, but, um, or actually, in that vlog, um, it was, like, falling down because, like, of that tape that was not holding up very well as what it promised. So, what I did is that I, I found this, um, this very strong glue that's meant for wood of any kind. And I glued it to the back of this uh, wood plank, put it up against the wall, wait for it to dry, and then I repainted over it. And it's been like that for a few months now. Or actually, it's been like that since uh, December. And now it's still holding up, and that's really awesome. Okay, now, I'm not going to show you basically the ticket because of the barcode. But, here's this thing. Before I printed out my ticket, um, I was just going to... What I was doing is that I was going to just like print out the boarding pass uh, without checking my bag. But before I even found out, uh, it was telling me that like a not a full size bag luggage or something is uh, not a full size luggage is permitted on the plane. I thought like it's basically talking about the suitcase. So we did some measurements because like it did say what luggage is not permitted unless if it exceeds, you know, this kind of measurements, blah, 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 long story. My mom measured it, measured it along with the wheels, and we thought it was okay. But but, but even this, even when I didn't want to check the bags before I could even print the ticket, it was telling me I cannot print the tickets because I have to check my bag. So what's gonna happen is that like um, once I get to the airport, I have to bring my luggage to the the carry the carry on the carry on panel over at the entrance, and so they can put a tag on it and bring it to the baggage claim. It's going to be coming with me, but it's just going to be at the bottom of the plane. And the, the funny thing is, is that like this plane that I'm going to be on is a 737. It's not really considered to be so much of a small plane because as far as I know, from what I remember, I think I've, I've been on 737s before and I think I was able to bring uh, this suitcase on there before. But unfortunately, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to bring the carry-on to the panel up front. At the entrance, they're gonna ta they're gonna tag it, and I'm just gonna bring my carry on on board. That's fine. I just hope I get everything. I just hope I still receive everything that I need. Anyways, um, I'm going to jump in the shower, finish up packing, and hopefully I'll get out of here very soon. I want to get settled into the airport as much as possible. So yeah. Also, um, this is the new iHome alarm that I got, and I took the batteries out and because here's the thing, when it's even when even when it's unplugged. It still has this bat when the battery's still inside, it still goes off. Like even when there's like no power basically. So I took out the battery so it'll stay silent throughout the weekend because I do not want my parents to like mess with their their if they're like, where's that noise coming from? And then just go in there and then just start messing with it, trying to turn it off. Because I know a little bit more about this device than I do than they do, so yeah. Alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna wash up and then we're gonna get ready for a vlog. And also, um, if you do not know, well, actually I did say, I was gonna say if you don't know who Lamar is, uh, like I said, I will talk a little bit more about him once I'm at the hotel. Anyways, let's get ready. Okay, I'm all washed up now, got a shave, and I just about, 
uh, finished packing. I just needed to put a few more stuff in. And I uh, pretty much just double checked to see, just made sure just to pack up some stuff that I needed. So I don't think there's really anything else for me to take at this moment. And my tickets for the show are actually on my phone. So um, yeah, delivery was not on the option. Neither was the print home from what I know, from what I remember. But um, yeah, so I just chose the, uh, or actually if I'm, if I'm correct, there's sometimes where uh, take it on your phone is just like uh, I think it's called something else but I forgot but uh, either way the, the the only option I had to choose was to have to take it on my phone so yeah I had to make sure my phone is properly charged for that anyways um, I'm now just gonna zip up my stuff make sure I really do have everything and I'm out of here and also I had breakfast and I'll be sure to document more what I can I'll see you guys at the airport so, I'm now here at Newark Airport, so I dropped my luggage off at the, at the front tables, they were very, so the people were very friendly and very reasonable, so I was just, he I was hearing a lot of things in my ears that like, uh, that there's times when there's luggage that get lost in the plane, and then like, uh, they don't, they go missing, and then people don't find them, that's what always just gets me nervous, so I'm on my way to, Prayers that I still have my luggage by the time I get off. So, time to get to the gate and get myself settled in. My flight doesn't leave for another couple hours. It's a good thing because I have time to get settled in. There's going to be another couple times this year where I go to this airport. It's not that I'm going to stop, but you know, there's I have other trips planned, but you'll see. So anyways guys, I'll see you at the gate. So, here I am at gate 105. These uh, waiting areas, they have tables, booths, so it's not like it's not just like any ordinary sitting area where you just have to sit and wait for your flight. Thankfully, like Newark Airport has this like unique waiting area where you can just like you know play with your tablet, sit at a table, get something to drink and book, fix so on. So I got myself some snacks and a drink. So I might get some more stuff. I don't know. Probably before I get on. Um, if I'm not that hungry, then I'll just let it simmer. But um, I'll, well, I'll let that wait. But I, I mean, like I said, I'm 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 gonna go. I'm I am gonna come back here another couple times because of there's other trips I have planned aside from Hawaii. So I said Hawaii if you couldn't hear me, just in case. But uh, yeah, but yeah, this isn't the only time I'll go to those shops. There is some other good stuff. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna see. Just take a, see. I'm, I'm gonna try to show you through this menu. Hold on. I gotta get my boarding pass. Hang. So right here, we have, they sell like dim sun, like raw, there's like a raw bar, salads, pasta, the sandwiches, they have a lot of things. I'm gonna take a look at what else, what else, I'm gonna take a look and see if I can get something while I'm here. Okay, so they do sell pizza and burgers, but I couldn't find it on the menu. So apparently we're not in dinner service, so apparently that's why. So I'm just gonna get some oysters and a calamari. So yeah. Uh, that's just about it. The problem is is that like they're very pricey so very expensive so yeah you might not want to pay for that you might not want to get food from here unless you want to pay some more money but yeah that's just my advice. So I think a half hour before I start before they start boarding is probably when I'll pick up a few other things and also they will sell food also on the plane but unless if anything really catches my eye I don't know if I'll be ordering anything from there but anyways uh, yeah anyways uh, I just uh, paid for my food basically they're taking in orders now so basically I think this whole menu right here is just lunch so yeah we're not in dinner service so they don't sell pizza yet but anyways uh Actually, I don't think I had pizza from here from what I remember, but um, I'll look through it again if I find it somewhere online. But anyways, um, 
that is still next time either way but anyways guys that is uh, pretty much it just for this part um, but yeah I'll catch you guys up on another update soon apparently my food's on the way uh, I know that worker just knew where I was sitting and placed in this uh, little eating mat along with the plastic fork and neck and napkin my lunch is here so the people who work around here who do the food and such they know where the order comes from what table what gate and then they bring it right to you so right here what I have I have some oysters I love having oysters I even have calamari which is good and the calamari you can even see the little octopuses in there the one the calamari I had at the Clarksville Inn um, was so wonderfully seasoned and was so delicious and I'm very sure this is going to be too. Let's give this a try. Fair try room. It's, it's pretty good. Let me try it with the sauce. Oh yeah. This has some flavor. Now I'm going to try those oysters. Mm. Yes, let me try another one this, with these cocktail sauce. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Okay, so I made the decision to just uh, not get any more food and wait till I get on the flight. Um, <clears throat> but what I think I remember also is that like um, you don't order food on the flight unless if it's like a three to four hour flight, and my plane the flight takes about two to two and a half hours. So I don't think I'm ever going to be ordering anything. But I think you uh, do have you can order drinks at least. So yeah. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna eat right now. But like I said, I do have my snacks, so yeah. All right, now it's waiting time. So for those of you who don't follow Kristen Anderson on Instagram, Kristen Anderson, the daughter of Dennis Anderson, actually tweeted this video, uh, well posted this video in her story. Again, for those of you who have followed her, if you've seen her story, she actually did um, the reference that I did for Adam Anderson, the one I started, you know, son under Adam. So yeah, she actually uh, did that. So if you didn't see it, uh, go to her Instagram and um, and check out the clip yourself. But remember, it's her story. I can't really show you right now because I have headphones on and I don't want to create a disturbance. So yeah. So if you don't, if you, so that's her Instagram right there. So just check out her story and you'll see she actually does a son and her Adam reference. New York City. Oh, and as you can see, this plane is smaller than that one. Very small. So yeah, it's no wonder why my luggage can't fit up top. New York City.
for a few more minutes. Please remain seated until the captain is safely parked just at the terminal gate and turned off the passenger seatbelt sign. We just landed a lot earlier than I thought. I'm on my way to the baggage claim to pick up my luggage. I am hoping it's still there because like I said, uh, the baggage claim on some occasions gets me nervous because I heard a lot that packages occasionally get lost in there. So yeah, um, so far I'm passing by American Airlines baggage claim, I gotta find United. At the baggage claim, I got my luggage right here. Hopefully uh, my flight home won't have any uh, problems like this. So now I'm at, I'm at one of the terminals right here, number N3. I told my I told Annie where I was, and she's on her way. She just got stuck in traffic a little bit, but now I'll check into my hotel. And we're gonna go get something to eat. Okay, it's been at least I guess 15. I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes. She still hasn't come yet. It's because I'm heading traffic, so I'm gonna see if I can. Do something that'll buy me some time and hopefully uh, well I'll have to let her know when she's about to pull because I gotta be right out there so yeah I'm decided to stay in because it was pretty chilly out. not too chilly but just minor okay I hope this music is not copyrighted okay so I just spent I don't know how long I think about about 15 to 20 minutes uh, walking around the airport in this area just um, just looking through some shops and such and Annie is still not here she hasn't texted me saying when she's coming but, well, I was like, text me when you get close, and she hasn't texted me yet. So, but I have to assume she's still a little stuck in traffic. So, well, let's hope it's not very long. Stewie's a really big guy, isn't he? <laughs> Stu, are you enjoying the view? Maybe he's enjoying the air, but yeah, I would take that as a yes. Stewie, you didn't have a proper introduction. <laughs> he's like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would take that as the proper hi. <laughs> he's also a well-behaved dog, so he makes sure not. He makes sure he's he makes sure not to step on anything. That's no, that. He wouldn't step on You have a paw? No, he doesn't. He doesn't do tricks. Okay. Being well behaved is about the extent of no, his you tricks. Know, well, yeah, I know, but I just thought I'd still try at least. No, he's not that dog. <laughs> hey, Stu, I will catch you up later, all right? All right, I'm here at the hotel. Look at my room. Oh, it's all blurry. Okay, there we go. All right, here is my room. And I really like this, um, and I'm gonna have a fair price for this. Um, so basically, okay, this right here is a closet. I'm gonna give you a little tour, some ironing equipment, hangers, just a typical closet. And here is my view. This is the view of Atlanta. Uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium is just down the road right there, so I can just walk there. And this is the, uh, the front entrance right here. And look at this, you can even see the sunset and a little bit of downtown. This is really beautiful. All right, and right here we have our own switch, we have our desk. And this is uh, basically the manual uh, TV entertainment, stuff like that. And we also have a fridge and a microwave. And this is a really cool, this is a really cool thing. I can just sit on the couch, listen to TV, even uh, do stuff right here. And this is ba basically the coolest uh, hotel I've been in. I think I've, I've actually, I uh, remember being in one, Atlanta, no, uh, it was in Indiana. Um, I know I was in Indiana and had a desk. or And I know that I was in one in Bridgeport where I had a, a separate desk but yeah this is basically the coolest one because yeah have it has a desk and but the, what's cool about this one it has a sofa and also these are some food that Annie hooked up and this is basically a potato pizza and that's really good 
and it has a garlic taste to it. I think this is basically the same potato pizza I had at the Star Provisions before, but just doesn't have like the parsley or anything like that. It's cold and I can tell it's crispy, but thankfully this hotel has a microwave to it. If I can close this box. And in here we have, okay, so it does have parsley right here. I can just put this on a random slice if I can. And also napkins. What are these? I think this is some. Um, this is. Oh, I think those are green apples. I'll have to try them. Actually, let's give it a try. I don't know what they are. Oh, it is a green apple. Okay. All right. And finally, and here, this is a sandwich. Oh. Okay, this is from Star Provisions. I see. And some cookies. This is, uh, th don't think that's an om- I thought it was an om cookie, it's not. So that's dessert, basically. Alright. Oh! Come on, you stupid box. Alright. Now I'm gonna heat up this pizza pizza in the microwave and let's get to eating. Okay. I don't know if I'm blurry right now, but... Wow. Alright. Um, so... Microwaving pizza is not really the best option because it's all, it gets a little soggy and not really so crispy anymore. All right, hold on, I'm gonna put on some parsley. Oh, and there's no plates, unfortunately, so I'm gonna leave a greasy microwave in here. I'm not that proud of that. All right, I'm gonna add these, I'm gonna, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna add this. It's a little bit much, but yeah, not so bad. Actually, it's not really so much. Some way to add flavor to that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna stand this up. I gotta use two hands for this. All right, here we go. Mm. Oh, ha. Oh, this hot. It's good though. Whew. Oh, gee. It's hot, but this is delicious. Oh. Hello. Oh. I'm gonna place it in here for a little bit. Let me try one. Not. Nah. Let me try one cold. Alright, here's one that we're gonna try that's not cooked. Well, it is cooked, but you know what I mean. Not warmed up. So this is what it's like. It's called crispy. Let's see, take a look. Alright, so this is the first time I'm eating this kind of pizza without the parsley. So, I can tell that it's crispier. Mm-hmm. You see, if you put it in the microwave, it's a little soggy, it gets soggy. But it's the best, it's the best option if you have it, if you're in a hotel. Greasy though. Mm hmm. Mm. All right, hold on. Alright, so the potato pizza, it's delicious nonetheless. Mm -mm. So, 
I was gonna go to Star Provision. I still am, but it's just like I thought they were gonna hook me up with the pizza over there, but I was already hooked up basically. But I'm mainly gonna go there just to try out the falafel burger. But tonight we are gonna go to the fish place and then try some food over there. But anyways, guys, I'm just gonna settle in for my hotel and I'll be back very soon. All right, so I'm gonna go get a drink. But first, here's one cool thing about my room. Right outside my room, you have a window, windows, and you have a beautiful view of the lobby. That's just uh, really, really cool. So I've been doing some thinking. Okay, so what I had of that pizza, so basically I'm sort of satisfied with the um, thing about the provision. Uh, but the provision though, I do want to still uh, try out that vegetarian burger. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is that like since uh, there's not much, I'm not like really full. But I sort of don't really feel like I'm in the place where I want to fill up some more food. So, um, I basically had enough, you know, I had calamari, oysters, and pizza, and a little bit of the green apples. So, I didn't have a cookie yet, I might, but, um, that's, per but, but that's basically all I'm going to be able to have. So, um... Yeah, I just thought about it for a little while, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the the I'm I'm still going to go to the the fish camp, which it, which is the actual name of it, not the fish place. Um, I'm going to still go to the fish camp, but that's actually where I'm going to go first tomorrow after breakfast. And then I'm actually I'm actually gonna go there for lunch, and then I'll be able to uh, go to the stadium from there. And then on Sunday, rather than just like putting up with the trouble of having, um, uh, what I will do for breakfast is that I will go to the pancake social on Sunday. A Sunday, what I'll do first is go to uh, the pancake social, and then hopefully uh, that day is when I'll go to um, Star Provisions for lunch. And then when it comes to dinner, I'll see if I'll be able to hook up with Lamar. Um, but um, right now I'm going to try to have that whole thing processed. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to... I'll have a cookie or two. But that's basically I'm, I'm all going to be able to have. Because I, don't, I won't have enough room for the rest of tonight. So the fish camp is where I'm going to go first thing tomorrow. Uh, but what I will have for breakfast is what the hotel serves for breakfast. And then I'll head to that uh, fish camp after I set everything up for the event. And then after I eat there, the stadium, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, is where I'm going to go next. So um, that's basically going to be it. Um, I don't know what else to say, but anyways, guys. Um, I'll get back to you in probably just a minute just to let you know what the cookies taste like and then that'll be it for the night. Okay, I'm gonna try one of these cookies. So, I think basically, I think this is, I don't know if the, I don't know if this is chocolate, I think it, actually I think it is. It does, but it does have some nuts in it, so let's give it a try at least. Hmm. Nice flavor. Hmm. It's interesting. Mm. I think this one is like lemony. Or mo more of corn. Oh yeah. I got a lemon taste there. I 
I know that it tastes very well. And finally, star. Hmm. Oh, that does have more of a lemony kick to it. Okay, guys, well, that's actually going to wrap up. Oh, embarrassing, isn't it? All right, that's actually going to wrap up day number one here in Atlanta. So I'll share a little bit of what I can of tomorrow, but I'll see you guys then. Uh, I won't be filming a whole lot tomorrow because I'll be at the event for the most part. And, uh, yeah, but I will, like I said, I will catch up what I can. But anyways, guys, good night, and I'll see you then. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday. Let's take a look at what it looks like outside. If it'll unblur, that would be great. There we go. Look at this. Uh, last time I was here, it was uh, overcast. I think it was overcast uh, pretty much, I don't know, the whole weekend. I know it was overcast on Saturday when I went to the show. And then, um, oh, I, okay, yeah, I only, like, stayed one night in this hotel where it was overcast. And I checked out because after the show, I went to the farm apartment. But this is the first time I'm waking up to sunlight in this area right here in this hotel. And it looks really beautiful. Burger King. Yeah, when, like when you wake up, you might think it's overcast, but that's because you don't get sunlight coming from over here. The, the sun, the sunset goes over there. The sun rises from back there. And also there is that building right up. There you have another town right over there. This is really beautiful. The show doesn't start actually for another couple of hours. So... I'm gonna get some breakfast. Uh, well, I'm gonna get dressed first. I'm gonna get breakfast, and then I'm gonna come back here, and I'm going to address the the, the situations that are go, going between me, Lamar, and the family, and um, and then I'm gonna actually switch to the phone because, uh, well, I'll get a little bit of vlogs there and there, but I'm not gonna do a so lot today. But then there will be more catching up tomorrow. But that so. Let's go get some breakfast. Oh, and before we go, I did not say this at all throughout the beginning of the vlog. I want to thank you guys for bringing this channel to over 100 subscribers. And yeah, I know that's not like the ultimate milestone, but this channel has been very slow from the very start. But it was catching up just a little bit from every vlog that I do, even though it's not like a big, you know, rise up, you know, but it, it, it'll, it'll slowly get there. But anyways, guys, I do want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing this channel to a hundred subscribers it means a lot. And I hope we can keep this channel growing somehow. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to do whatever I can to keep this channel active as possible. But anyways, guys, let's go eat. All right, it's breakfast. I'm actually having coffee, but I'm going to let it cool down, so I'm having uh, peach juice first. But right here we have roasted potatoes, scrambled eggs, donut, it's probably not a donut, I forgot the name, I'm so stupid, and bacon. There's other things I want to try, like toast and such, but this is what I'm having first. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have toast and porridge. I was uh, going to get a waffle, I still am, it's just that like someone's still using it well. It's actually finished, but no one came to pick it up, so right now I'm just going to stick with this. Breakfast was really good. <clears throat> well, it was good. Um, I'm not going to say really good, but it was good. Um, I didn't get to have any waffles because, like, there was, uh, apparently, I think someone made waffles, and I think they forgot because no one came to pick it up. So, but that's all right. I'm going to be having, I'm going to go to the Pancake Social tomorrow, and um, I will have, I am thinking of getting a chicken and waffles because I never really had that before. Anyways, um... I do need to save some room for the fish camp. Anyways, now let's get to something very important. I'm switching over to the camera now. All right, I hope, yeah, that should be good, I hope. All right, now, oh, okay. All right, if you don't have a good view of me, I do apologize, but I do believe I do. All right, anyways, this is a quick thing that I just need to address about Lamar. I'm not gonna talk about too much because it's mainly personal, but here's the thing. So I first met Lamar in Las Vegas back in 2012. 
we, me and Dad were on the bus on the way to Sandboy Stadium. We were watching, uh, they, they, wait, when you take the bus to Sandboy Stadium, they play like a Monster Jam DVD over that, and then we talk, we talk about a lot of things. I think I was mainly talking to Dad, and then uh, when this guy in front of us started uh, talking about the same thing to us, about like so, uh, stuff and different opinions, and we started a conversation. And then Dad had to go back to the hotel to get my grandfather after about a couple of hours for the show, and then I was left with this guy who turned out to be Lamar, the guy on the bus, and he took uh, he took good care of me while I was there. Nothing really happened. He made sure nothing happened to me. He prov he helped me provide with some food, and he waited in lines with me. He was a good guy. So. It was then, uh, one year later, or nearly one year later, when he invited us to Atlanta. So, yeah, he didn't, I think he might have bought the tickets for us. I think he did. But the hotel and stuff like that, um, we did ourselves. And then Annie, who owned one restaurant at the time, I forgot what it was. But the first night we went there, we actually uh, got a little behind the scenes of Monster Jam. Like, we met Scott Hartsock in one parking lot. And we even went a little bit in the back area, but we couldn't go all the way in there. But uh, <clears throat> we went to one of Annie's restaurants. Again, I forgot the name, but I'm not going to waste my time trying to remember what it is. But we went and ate there, and we had a good dinner. We had a good conversation. I, I thought everything was going well at the time. But then um, after we ate, this, is, this was something I haven't really heard for a long time before this trip. You know, Well, this trip right now is that... After we left the restaurant, Annie called my mom and and she was like, I don't trust this guy. I don't think Mark should be anywhere around him. Like, she she kind of like saw Lamar as someone shady. So, um, I don't know how she noticed that she that he was an untrustable guy. But like, there's like something in her that like saw that this guy is no good. So, um, and also at one point, this is something I didn't really notice. <clears throat> I was actually 15 at the time, but I was about to turn 16. So um, there was that one point in, in, in our hotel when I, I believe Lamar was picking us up. And then he actually uh, had some girls with her uh, it, that I believe were, his fr were friends of his. And then my dad, when he actually got up and said, Mark, let's go, it was actually more like a Mark, let's go. It was like as if he wants us to get away from Lamar. So, um, I didn't really notice what was going on. And the other thing that my dad saw in Lamar that made him believe that he's trouble is that, like, he smokes. We, well, yeah, smoking is bad for you. Yeah, it causes effects to the body, it can cause cancer, and it can even cause trouble to the head. So that's why I don't smoke. So, um, and why I don't do drugs. I never will do drugs or anything like that. It's not me. But, um, but... Uncle Michael, my, an uncle of mine named Mike, uh, he smoked quite a bit and he had cancer and he passed away from it. So, um, there, yeah, and I have like a few friends of mine. Paul Meyer, who is a friend of mine who you've seen on the Lego Fan Five Six channel before, he actually smokes cigarettes and he's doing fine right now. And we're on good, we're, re, we're on reasonable terms. I mean, I'm trying to reach out to him about something. He doesn't, he doesn't really get back to me so much, but he's on a busy, busy schedule. But, as for Lamar, I mean, yeah, sure, there's, he's not perfect like everyone. I'm not perfect. I might have flaws. Lamar has flaws. But, um, yeah, after the trip, I thought we would be able to go back again next year because I thought Lamar really hooked us up big time. But it was like, Dad was like, he only, like, gave me, like, a little bit of information saying I can't trust Lamar. I, th I, I felt like he was scamming us. I felt like he was stealing our monies. That was about all I could get out of him. And I never really spoke to Lamar again but it was until when me and my sister were in Orlando and um, Lamar actually got in contact with me and um, he actually said that he was in Orlando and we actually reunited after all these years in Orlando we were in line for I, I don't know if it was I think it might have been Gravedigger or I don't remember what truck we were seeing but it was a big line and we we reunited and it was a uh, it was a surreal moment. It was like um, after back in 2013 up until 2019 when he reunited with me after seeing that I was growing and pursuing you know my dreams as a monster truck driver, he really um, noticed that I really was dreaming and had a passion, you know? So um, 
And he even made a, an appearance on Jesus Esparza's vlog. So here's this clip right here. And yeah, um, I didn't really, I only like managed to take a selfie with him and and we, I even introduced him to my sister, and I, I don't know if Sarah believes that he sees, that she see, I don't know if she sees trouble in him too, or anything like that. But yeah, I told, I was like talking to Lamar, that saying like, hey, my, I didn't really, I didn't really talk to you a lot because my dad said he doesn't trust you and such like that. Little did I know, um, Andy didn't trust him either. But that was before the trip, and I was like hooked trying to hook him up with maybe Annie's restaurants because like before I was told the information I thought I would recommend these restaurants because you know the food was so delicious but then it was until a mom told me that like Annie called her after she, after Lamar came to the restaurant back in 2013 that she doesn't trust him and he doesn't want to come he does she doesn't want him to come to her restaurants ever again so he's not like legally banned but it's more like uh, he like he's not allowed to come back so basically um, you will see Lamar in the vlog if I manage to see him, but um, if I do, um, I w what he wants to do, he, he wants to try to um, reconcile, uh, re you know, a friendship with my dad. Well, he never really met my mom, but mom kind of believes that he's no good. He does that she believes that someone like this could be shady, but um, I don't know. I I'm going to do what I can to see if things can come around on this. And I, w I will hopefully catch up with Lamar tomorrow on dinner, which is Sunday, and see if there there's something we can do. He's planning to actually come to East Rutherford, New Jersey, to see Monster Jam at MetLife. The thing I'm very nervous and uh, the thing I'm nervous to do is that like I want to invite him, um, is to invite him to my house to try to reconcile things with my family. But the thing is, is that like with these things coming around with me, my dad and my mom, is that like things were out of control it wasn't that we had like an argument over the problems that Lamar has and they were even like you have to stop giving Lamar this information and this information if I gave him my if I gave him our address they're probably gonna like flip a shit so um that's the reason why I'm nervous because like I apparently they're already up my ass already about giving Lamar enough information about what it is but like um that's why I'm nervous. I'm, I don't want to like refuse it, but like, but I want him to understand that this is coming from my parents and not me. So yeah, there's a reason why my parents don't trust him and he doesn't trust him. And yeah, I can understand that there's flaws that's going on in him. And like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of you know heavy smokers or I'm, I don't tr I don't I, I really hate you know the scam guys around. But you know um. Like the time I was scammed at Vegas and someone stole my money, um, well, more like tricked me out of my money. But, but I do hope Lamar can, you know, achieve his dreams and, you know, uh, really can stay a clean life as possible. But yeah, um, hopefully things will be all right. But right now, at this point, it's probably going to be a slow process. So I'm going to do what we can. We're going to do what we can. But I doubt that things are going to turn out very pretty. But I guess we're gonna have to just wait and see. So, anyways, um, uh, let's. I'm gonna get a few. I'm gonna go back to getting things ready, and I'll, I'll see you at the fish camp. So, let's continue. Oh, one of the cards is upside down, actually. But these are the gift cards that Annie actually gave me for Christmas from the chain of Star Provisions. Actually, they work at both the fish camp and Star Provisions, but for the Pancake Social, I don't think it actually works there. Regardless, I'm still gonna go there for breakfast tomorrow. But yeah, these are the gift cards that'll actually uh, help me, uh, you know, with, with the discount. Now, I'm just packing my stuff to go to the pay party. Well, I'm going to have lunch first and then go to the stadium. I'm already geared up. I have my sweet black army pants with black shoes. I'm ready. I'm just about almost ready to go. Yeah, my hair is probably a little messy. I'm still doing what I can to get it all proper while it's not as long as it, as it is right now. But, yeah, all right, let's go eat. All right, so I'm here at Fish Camp, uh, WH Styles Fish Camp. People are here are very friendly, so Annie has, this is one of the restaurants that Annie owns. She has, uh, she has friends here who are able to hook me up with a lot, with, they were able to hook me up and they're really nice. They hooked me up right here at the bar and uh, 
I got like the the Anchor Steam Steam Beer Pint. I don't know what kind of beer this is, but either way, cheers. All right. Oh yeah. I was uh, coming down here from New York, so oh, like, okay. yeah, it's like very rare for me to come to these places. So. Okay. So what part are you? Uh, West Nyack, Rockland County. Okay. You, you were you asking what part of New York? Oh yeah, that's where I'm from. Okay. You live, you live there? Oh yeah. So I was just having a conversation with the chef, one of Annie's friends and bosses. Well, not really bosses because you know she owns the place, but yeah, he's a really cool guy. He even recommended me to one day go to New Orleans. This beer might be light, but man, does it have a kick to it. So this right here is a clam chowder, and these are like some bread pieces. I'm gonna try it with this bread piece first. Hot. Good flavor. Really nice. Alright. Yeah, let's give the cut platter a Oh, not so hot, but quite hot. I'm gonna try again. It's a really good flavor. It has a really good flavor, though. It's very delicious. What we have next here is the calamari. I think that's barbecue sauce. I'm gonna give this a try. No, not barbecue sauce. It's hot. Although, though, it does have a good flavor. Mini octopus. Mmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Might be in clam chowder. Ooh. Oh, that really helps the flavor. Now we're on to our main dish, a lobster roll. Got it. Hi, how are you? I, I, I might get something to go. I'm just going to check to see if I can get you a lobster roll. I love it. Love lobster Wow. That's a really strong drink. All right, so I just finished my meal, quite full, but that's pretty all right because I don't think I had to really order anything in the stadium unless if I get hungry. But yeah, I just paid for the the food and I still have forty dollars left on this gift card, so I I, ha I has enough money left for pretty much the what I needed the provision. Pancake social, they can't really take it. Anyways, uh, I'm just gonna request my Uber and make sure that I get there safe. All right, so I just uh, I just had uh, lunch at W H Fish Camp. Mm -hmm. uh, Style Fish Camp. All right, would you like to introduce yourself? This is uh, one of Annie's uh, chefs <laughs> and, oh, and Annie's friend. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Fe Poon, the executive chef at Fish Style Fish uh, W S I Fish Camp, and I'm with Mark today. All right. Uh, first of all, if you are in the Atlantic area, if you if you live right here in Atlanta or you visit, I do recommend uh, coming to the fish jobs. Their, their food is absolutely delicious. <laughs> Definitely also, also from my point of view. So like she's really friendly. Lots of uh, lots of uh, Annie staff is very friendly. 
because like you know they know her and stuff like that yeah so um so yeah they were very nice up uh, hooking me up so like if it comes to like a family friend or member they're always here to help us out so of course all right Okay, like I said, um, if you are in the, ever in the Atlantic area, come to uh, either Star Provision Social, uh, Pancake Social, or Fish Camp. They'll they'll help, they'll hook you up with the best food possible. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm gonna get picked up on my Uber now. I'm gonna head to the stadium. But like I said, come visit them whenever you get. And then I trust me, food definitely delicious. <laughs> you fun. <laughs> <laughs> There it is, guys. MetLife. Uh, Mercedes Benz Stadium. I was about to say MetLife Stadium, but no, Mercedes Benz Stadium. So I'm actually walking um, across this bridge right, right here. It's the inside two bridge. So I'm gonna. I'm just. This is my, This is a way of kind of like getting inside. So I'm just gonna walk across it and then just get in line for the early early entry to the pit party. I'm um, not gonna do so much clips right here because I have to save my battery. My ticket's on this phone right here, so yeah. Not that bad. It's kinda like kinda like in the mid 50s to 60s right now. But yeah, and again, this right here is the inside of this walkway bridge crosswalk bridge uh, whatever you call it has a nice little nice little roof with some lights on it it gives you like some minor sh minor protection from the rain but there is holes all over so it's not really protected unless if there's like glass of any kind so yeah now we're just gonna emerge from this bridge right here and then we'll finally be in line well, I'm gonna. Sh the blind is not. It's not really too big. There is a lot of people gathering out outside. There is like an hour left before the pit party, early entry at least. If I can show you. Okay, I can't really see. Well, there is some people over there. Anyways, it's time to get in line. Oh yeah, I thought I saw a lot of people. I thought I saw a lot of people at first. Apparently, I got mixed. Uh, visions from the car, but yeah, that's the early entry apparently right around there. Okay, not again So son and Narada, How am I surprised to see you standing after what I put you through at the back of the dungeon? Well back in the woods the yeah. haunted forest? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's because both my legs have been reconstructed from the bones of grave diggers. Or as far as I know they probably brought you up to a coffin, raised you up, and hit you with lightning like they did to Frankenstein. Basically like Thor. Or well, Frankenstein. Now, I'm make, mainly making this clip to let you know of what you did to Jesus Esparza back in the West Coast was not cool. What, and I chucked him out? Yeah! Well, that's what he gets. What did he do to you? He's an innocent kid! Oh, whoops. <laughs> he simply just walked up just to say hi to you and you just choked him just to send a message to me. Well, well you know what? You got my attention. You know what? It's time for me to choke you out. <laughs> Customized Home Revolution X Max. This is a really sweet looking car. The crushed with Steve Mostaker. Rest in peace, Mike Thompson. We miss you and we love you. Okay, so I told you a little bit about this man. Well, here he is right now. This is my guy, Lamar. He's from, right here from Atlanta. So I told you a little bit of what's been going on with me and my, uh, him, and, and him and my family. Like I said, I didn't want to talk too much about it because it was mainly personal. So we came to the decision that like he might not come to my house because like if my parents still have beef with him, that's all right. But I'm still going to see him, whether if it's here in, our, uh, here in Atlanta or somewhere outside of my house, that's completely fine. Yep. Tell them a little bit about yourself, Lamar. Hi, I'm Lamar. I'm from here in Atlanta. Been a long time fan of Monster Jam. Been a long time friend to Mark. Oh, we just enjoy it. Yep. We're, we're not really, and he also agrees that he's not a huge fan of Monster Jam today as back in the past, but we're still trying to embrace it as much yeah. as we could. 
and for the uh, younger generations yeah. coming up. We've actually known each other since 2012, Las Vegas World Finals. Yep. Then I, we met again in 2013, and also, and we didn't see each other since then. Like I said, because of the family issues. Yeah. It's a little loud right now. We're talking a little loud because there's lots of trucks like warming up their engines a little bit. Yeah. Just want to make sure you can hear us. Anyways, uh, we're not. We might not see each other still there and there, but I mean, at least we'll be able to catch up more often. So, anyways. Lamar is a great guy. He might not have, he might he does have his flaws. So my family might have some, some points about it, but it's not all entirely true. He's honest. True. He's a great guy. He's not a drug dealer. He's not a scammer. He's none of those guys. Nope. He's very honest. So I, as just so, a family man. Yep. So I believe in second. I always believe in second chances. And also uh, before we sign off from this clip, I want to introduce you to his son. Come here, Kyleo. This is this is Lamar's son, Kyleo. You want to say hi? Say hey, son. Hey, hey, little boy, stop being shy. Okay, that's a wave. That's That works cool. Any, Anyways, we're going to get ready to go showtime. So I'm just going to say a quick goodbye to Lamar. I'll catch you. Well, um, actually, um, I forgot to mention, we'll catch up a little bit after the show or maybe yeah. tomorrow. Um, I will do a little bit of the ball on camera, but like when we go talk a little, a little bit about that stuff, I won't catch on camera because if it involves personal things, I don't want to involve that. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna, now we're gonna sign off on this clip. We're gonna do showtime. We're gonna have a great time. Yep. We'll catch you guys later. See you later. Uh, have a great time, with Mark. All right, Mark. There's absolutely no words to describe this event. So, unfortunately, there's not gonna be an Atlanta video for any of you guys to to watch on the Lego Empty Fan TV channel. And for that, I do really do apologize. From the bottom of my heart, I really do. I know a lot of you are asking why, what's going on? Well, tragedy struck well for me. So it was a. Uh, it was after I ate at. It was after I ate at fish camp, and a few hours in, uh, into the event, pet party racing, everything was fine, and, but it was until like towards uh, throughout two wheel skills things started to take a turn I felt like uh, there was a buildup of something going up in my body I didn't think it was anything big deal I it was like an urge like sickness and I didn't think it was anything I thought it would wear off but I was wrong because during one freestyle run I vomited and caused quite a scene people around me scattered away and I made a really huge mistake by not getting up and reporting the accident. What happened was the accident. It was not intentional. And then that's where tragedy really struck. Because of this, because of my stupid ego that prevented me from doing the right thing, this lady that sat right next to me grabs my camera I think she, she was like telling me, do you sit here? And, or I, I, yeah, she was like basically saying all these things like you shouldn't really be sitting here anymore. But she was pissed off. Then she grabs my cam, she grabs my camera with force. And it was a conversation back and forth. But long story short, she grabs the camera, takes, forces the camera out of my hand, throws it over. And yeah, I got booted away. I got booted out of my seat. And I basically stayed in the lounge area, filed the report, and I had a talk with some um, employees around the employees in there, even some head security. They were really uh, helpful and very reasonable. And I generally felt like it could have been prevented. Had it not been for my sickness, you probably would have an episode coming right soon. And um, what else? I don't even know. I generally think also that the wiser decision would be just to either, you know, yeah, boot the fan out of the seat or get a security guard and, you know, escort you out of the seat, take you back to the lounge. But that's not what happened. What happened escalated throwing someone's camera over the edge from the second floor and 
that could be that's dang, that's dangerous because people who could get hurt whether if it's a camera or anything heavy people can get hurt and I don't want to press charges on the lady and people have the right to be upset but just to take someone's possession and throw it over the edge is just a different level from the bottom of my heart to all the people who that sat around next to me I do sincerely apologize and I do wish you all well so I, I want to come back to Atlanta and be better. Right now, I'm. I don't. Need, there's just a lot of things. Um, I got my camera back. Thank God, I got my camera back. So thankfully, I didn't walk out without it. This is a camera. It looks fine. Doesn't look like there's, you know, anything broken. The the lenses, um, they were still a little fogged up, but. Here's what I found turn, upon turning it on. The screen. The screen is damaged. So the camera, basically, thank God it still works, but I have to get the screen fixed. I basically have to get this whole camera fixed. But I mean, thank God I still have it. So I'm gonna bring it to Best Buy once I get home, have it fixed, and then restart, restart from there. It's going to be a new beginning once that goes through, but I need to get some rest. I'll try to contact you in the morning, give you a little bit of an update. Right now, I'm still trying to recover. And like I said, people, they have the right to be upset because, like, I didn't get up and didn't file a report, and I should have done that because I let the ego, I let my stupid photography ego get the best of me. I'm an honest person. I'm not violent. I'm not trying to ruin, I don't mean to ever ruin anyone's fun but but basically i i did for the people that were sitting right next to me and they have the right to be upset and they were right to say that you know i'm this person and you know i really fucked up and i did i'm willing to own for my mistake i don't want to press charges on the lady but i just want um you guys to learn from this uh that uh if if there's anyone that vomits next to you and doesn't do anything about it, do the right thing and just either, you know, boot them out of their seat, go, you know, you got to tell them to leave or tell a security guard about the incident and they'll escort it out. Just do not grab any of their uh, belongings or anything and don't throw them over the edge because it is understandably that you're upset, but that's never the answer. That's never the answer. It's very dangerous. It's forbidden. It can be illegal, but but I just want you guys to take the the right route. Show a better example for your kids, and yeah, if you have kids like, and also the kids that were also sitting right next, right by me, I also apologize and I wish them the best. So, basically, I think what happened is that like I had food poisoning from what I ate at the fish camp. So that basically, I think that's what I'm still suffering. I mean. I'm a little bit mixed. My stomach is in butterflies. But I'll get better. Now, not health-wise, I will. But when I go to Monster Truck, before I, before and after I go to Monster Truck shows, I will be better. I'm not going to let this crush me. It does hurt, but I'm not going to let this affect me. Right now, my basic goal is just to move on and uh, restart. So unfortunately, there is not going to be any uh, video footage because like the show was not over then and I didn't get to film everything. So I deleted every footage and picture off of the camera regarding the event. But regardless, I will go back to Atlanta, hopefully next year if I'm able to. And I'll be sure to get you a show then. You still have the uh, last year's Atlanta show on my LEGO MT Fan TV. And like I said... Thank God I still have, I got this camera back, but I have to get it fixed now. So, my goal is to bring it to Best Buy and once, you know, once I get home and uh, get it fixed and uh, just move on from this. But once again, I do apologize now. I have to get some rest. I, I'm just still in disbelief. No words can really describe it. I'm talking like this because I'm still feeling a little bit, you know, downward, but yeah. Anyways, guys, good night, and I hope, and 
I want to go to tomorrow. I feel like I want to go to tomorrow's show to restart, but you know, if my camera was not, if my camera was never damaged, if it were never damaged, then yeah, I would have been able to maybe restart for you guys. But uh, no, that's not gonna happen. But anyways, I'm gonna go to sleep. Try to forget about what happened. I mean, just. Good night, guys. And I do apologize once again. It's, I mean, yeah, it's my fault. I vomited that and didn't really uh, report it. And that's that's because my ego got the best of me and I couldn't do the right thing. But yeah, I just need you guys to know that. Like, if you take, if you're, if you see someone filming after they, uh, you know, after what happened, don't just tap them on the shoulder or let them finish what they got to do. Tap them on the shoulder and then just tell them to just get out of here. You really messed up, and or either that, or get a security guard and they'll have them escorted. No, no big deal. You'll never see them again. But yeah, just don't like take their cameras. Don't throw it over the edge because that's never the answer, and it's very dangerous. You could get in big trouble for that too. So I'm gonna go, guys. Good night, and I do apologize. So, it's my last day here in Atlanta. It's Sunday. Now, I'm feeling a lot better. My tummy, my stomach is more like in butterflies right now. And sometimes I wonder why can't my body just react to it? I want to take a crap rather than just like throw it all up. I'm... So, how am I doing? So, I'm still in disbelief of what happened. Like... There's other ways to, like, if there's someone else who, like, say, if you see someone who vomits and they're not leaving, there's other ways to, you know, fix, on. there's other ways to, uh, fix this situation. I mean, for one, you have to, you have to tell them, you know, you shouldn't be sitting here anymore. Like, I mean, if you're going to be upset, that's okay. You have the right to be. Because you're concerned from yourself that you can catch something. The same thing also goes with your kids. The other thing you could do is get a security guard and then just have them reach out to the person and say, Hey, you gotta you have to you're gonna have to come with us. And so if you like say if you're sitting on the second row and that something like that happens, if you're holding like say like you know, something heavy, like if it's a camera or anything like that. Throwing, grab, taking it from someone and throwing it over the edge is taking it to an extreme level, like I said. Because if you're, because if the section is above another floor with people below, you can hurt someone. I don't think, I don't know if anyone got hit in the head from what I know. But, like I said, they have, you have the right to be upset. What I will do is be better. If next time I do end up vomiting, which hopefully unlikely it will happen again, um, but if I do, I'll have to uh, call off my photography, at least for the rest of the event, and leave. That's what I will do from now on. Not just, you know, stick around and cause a scene. But, yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I was expecting like my camera to be smashed into like a million pieces, even if they found it. I mean, thankfully, it's still in one piece, and thankfully, it's still working. But I had to get the screen fixed. I think there might be something else that's damaged inside of it. But just from what I see, I only see the screen. And the lenses, they're not cracked. That's also a thank God moment. Probably just a little bit fogged up. So, so unfortunately, yeah, this, I had to delete all the footage. Because like, if I wasn't able to uh, film the whole show that I don't think there's any point in uploading the whole thing or even putting it all together so yeah I don't understand like sometimes like why my body like if you eat too much food why doesn't it you know why don't you crap it rather than just have it react by coming up right out of you just like that so the cause of this actually was food poisoning and that's why I vomited about a couple times throughout the rest of the night so and thankfully, though, the security and all the other people, they were very understandable of what happened that, you know, both parties are wrong. Like, yeah, I was wrong. I vomited and I didn't take care of it as soon as possible, even if it meant I had to give up film in the show and such like that. And maybe things could have been different. But, uh, and yeah, but the, the other one, the other person that was in the wrong was this woman. I don't know her name. I don't know her. 
but like what reckless behavior is never the answer in response like yeah it's a reaction but really there there's other ways to fix it rather than just cause a scene i'm just it's just a thing it also it also is a good thing that it didn't break out into a fight but things did go down so am i going to come back to atlanta next year honestly i do hope i do because i want to uh restart this whole thing not eat so much and i want to get the just, you know, enjoy the show and not really cause a scene. But, uh, but that's what I am going to do. Once, once I get home, I'm going to get my camera fixed, bring it to Best Buy, have it fixed, and then start over. And, yeah, I'm learning that I have to eat light. I did say I was going to go on a diet, even if it's for the most part, even whether if I have, like, a junk food or two. But, yeah. I am going to eat like today because my stomach is still feeling weak, has all butterflies in there, but I'm just going to make the best of what uh, this weekend has for me, but, but like, it, but yeah, like when I, when I went to the security guards, I mean like, uh, they were reasonable, they were very understanding. And, like, there was even two other security guards that came up. And then, like, yeah. And, like, they agreed that, like, yeah, it was uncalled for that the woman did that and such like that. You are wrong on one point. But, yeah, that, that other thing was reckless, and, you know, reckless behavior and was dangerous. So, the the family that was sitting uh, to my left, they were very under, they were very apologetic. I, like, when I, I actually vomited again. But this time I went to the bathroom. And then when I came back out, they were right there talking to the security, and I was like, "I'm very sorry." And then like, yeah, they were they they accepted it. Like they knew it was an accident. They they knew it shouldn't have went down like that. So like I said, I don't want to press charges on the woman. I don't want to sue her. I want her to you know live the best life possible. I want her to raise her kids. My 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 thoughts and prayers go out to all the people who sat right next to me or near me, and I want to wish them the best health. But. My intention is never to really get people infected. I'm not like that bad person who wants to get people sick or anything like that. It's an accident and what mainly just like halted me from doing the right thing was that like I let the, my photography ego get the best of me. So right now I'm, it's still in my mind but I'm still you know doing what I can to move on. So I'm gonna get better. I wanna be a better person. I wanna try to make the best out of this but yeah. Okay. Anyways, on now, I'm packing. I'm about to check out of my hotel. It's a slow process, but uh, yeah. And I also uh, cleaned the, my shoes best I could. I even cleaned out what was on my bag. <sighs> so it, there is like a little bit of marks on my shoes, like after what happened. But I cleaned it out. I I did manage to clean what I could. So. Yeah, so I'm just gonna pack up, brush my teeth, clean up, clean myself up, and we're gonna get out here and then we're gonna go to the farmhouse. So like I said, I'm gonna make best of what I can before I go home. And then like I said, once I get home, I'm gonna bring my camera to Best Buy, get it fixed. And then hopefully, moving forward, I will be a better person. I will eat not so much, and hopefully I will be better. And if I do come back to Atlanta, hopefully next year, then uh, hopefully things will be better. All right. I gotta go get packed, get ready. I'll be I'll be back with you soon. Okay, so while I was at right after I checked out of the hotel, I called Best Buy and um, set up my appointment to bring in my camera for repairs. So despite the way that I feel, um, I'm gonna have a little bite, but I'm gonna have like a small meal. I'm just gonna be aware of what I have as we go to the Star Provision. Waffle burger.
I'm good. Well, yeah. We're here at Annie's farm. If the camera, there we go. That is basically the the horse, one of the horse areas. I got a really nice view out here, and the door. And so this is basically my room for the day. And uh, I thought I was gonna be in that apartment right across for sure, but. Apparently the the cats are out, and uh, basically it gets Clifford worried, and um, yeah, so I'm not staying in there this time. I might try to give you another tour of the barn all all around if I could if I can. Don't know if I will though, but right now I'm gonna get settled in. So I decided to do a little bit of walking around the farm. Get a little fresh air. It's around 55 degrees, but it's in a way still pretty chilly. Oh, almost dropped this. Um, so I was uh, I was taking a nap, but like when I woke up just to take a look at the probably just at the social medias, um, I noticed the time was 4:30. But, uh, or, well, it's actually 4.30 now, I might be wrong, but I decided to take a little walk around the farm before it gets too dark. And, uh, we have some planes flying over. Uh, there's one, one coming from above up there. All right. The camera right here is low on battery, so I'm going to uh, turn this off in just a second. The charger I have for this camera is basically the same size as for the other camera. So Best Buy actually told me that like I have to make sure that the camera, damaged camera, has a fully charged battery. And um, I also have to charge this one, so I'll make sure it has full battery. Um, so yeah. I'm not really gonna do much around here on the farm like I did last year, but I mean, what, can I, what else can I do? My stomach still feels like it's upside down, so it's like I'm really trying to be cautious. I hope I, it's not like this for too long. Uh, Andy actually gave me some chew tabs or something to ease off the pain of the stomach. I hope it is working, but like right now, it just still feels like it's just not all there. So, I'm gonna walk around for a little bit and uh, then I'll probably get settled in for real this time. I just wanted to be sure I get a little bit of air. So, nothing really much happened. It was, I just uh, went back to take a little rest. My body's still a little numb, but I'm gonna go to bed now. So good night, guys. And if I don't see you, thanks for watching this vlog. It didn't turn out the way I wanted, but uh, I do hope to see you again soon, and hopefully, vlogs will be better.